The Secret CIA Museum, 1947 to present day. The Central Intelligence Agency, more commonly known as the CIA, or informally as the agency, is the U.S. intelligence service that's in charge of gathering sensitive foreign information and carrying out covert operations abroad. The CIA was created in 1947 with the signing of the National Security Act by President Truman, and its headquarters are based at Langley in Virginia. A little-known fact is that inside this complex is a museum containing over 18,000 unclassified artifacts. The museum itself was conceived in 1972 by a request made by then-CIA Executive Director William Colby to commemorate the agency's 25th anniversary. Although it may also have been founded partly as a PR move, as protests against American involvement in the U.S.-Vietnam War reached fever pitch, Walter Fortheimer, an agent of the CIA's predecessor, the Office of Strategic Services, was tasked with choosing the artifacts. In 1988, the museum was finally realized. But as this secret museum is closed to the public, its role is more about encouraging recruitment for the agency, the preservation of historically significant items linked with intelligence, and to underline the successes of the agency while downplaying its failures. It also lends its artifacts to not-for-profit institutions such as public museums. The items very much focus on how the CIA has developed cutting-edge technology for spying and espionage over the years. The collection also showcases the more deadly and sinister side of espionage, with exhibits like the High Standard 22 Ultra Silenced Pistol. This gun was developed way back in World War II and was nearly totally silent, as well as being flashless. It used 22 caliber or 5.6 millimeter bullets with a 10 round magazine and was semi automatic. Though it did have some serious drawbacks, the chief ones being that the suppressor had to be cleaned thoroughly after every 50 rounds fired or run the serious risk of jamming, and the fact that it was an extremely cumbersome 14 inches or 350 millimeters long. It's thought that this weapon was still in service as late as the Gulf War in 1991. Right outside the CIA headquarters lies the A-12 Oxcart. With early designs beginning in late 1957, it was intended to succeed the American U-2 spy plane monitoring the USSR during the Cold War. After a U-2 was shot down by Soviet Air Defense Forces in 1960, it was instead used to photograph strategic locations over North Vietnam and North Korea in 1967 and 1968. Flying over 90,000 feet in the air at a staggering Mach 3.2, over three times faster than the speed of sound, it dodged over a dozen surface-to-air missiles during operations. On the other hand, six of the 15 A-12s that were constructed would be lost due to faulty mechanisms, and three agents would lose their lives. The CIA's Insectothopter, developed back in the 1970s, this intricately pieced robotic dragonfly, only one gram in weight, was crafted to carry an even smaller listening device that had been recently made at the time. The first insectothopter design was shaped like a bumblebee, but as it couldn't fly stably and would be noticed if it hovered for too long, it was swapped with the dragonfly model. With a tiny engine in its body to move its wings, it pushed excess gas out from its tail to propel itself forward. Based on the test flight recordings, it could fly as far as 600 feet or 200 meters and for as long as a minute. But because even a noticeable amount of contrary wind would set it off course, it would never be used operationally. The CIA also developed a robotic catfish nicknamed Charlie, an unmanned underwater vehicle. It was constructed to potentially carry out clandestine water sampling missions behind enemy lines. Storing water into its body, it could bring it back to a lab to check unfamiliar waters for any harmful or novel substances. Charlie was very much an experimental design that relied on a radio handset to control it, much like radio-controlled boats in today's public parks, but created 30 years ago and underwater. 
it had a pressure hull just like submarines possess to stay afloat, a ballast system to allow water inside and out, as well as a propulsion system in its back for it to swing its tail. It's not known if the CIA did any further work on developing this rather unusual concept. It's not just spies who can benefit from anonymity and security. NordVPN keeps personal information under lock and key with its threat protection, ready to shield your identity, block trackers, maliciously intrusive ads, and harmful websites. Just enable it from the NordVPN app settings to transmit information through a secure, encrypted tunnel that ensures your data is as protected as the CIA's. And with the freedom to use NordVPN on up to six devices without losing speed and responsiveness, you can guarantee your secrets are well kept. Use it to overcome blocked online content, whether it's a website, your favorite history channel, or to find out exactly what's in the secret museum. Uh, we're just kidding on that last one. But we're not kidding about this great deal. Get an exclusive discount on NordVPN's two-year plan and enjoy their free anti-malware by clicking the link in the description below. Go to nordvpn.com slash simple history and try Nord risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. Some items displayed at the museum are truly novel and extremely bizarre. For the CIA, use things like false rocks or fake hollowed-out trees to house communications between agents and their handlers. On some occasions, the CIA would even even use real dead rats to conceal messages in and would sprinkle Tabasco hot sauce over them to discourage cats from savaging these corpses. There are also some CIA war trophies on display here at the museum, like a throttle control cable from a North Vietnamese AN-2 Colt biplane. On the 12th of January 1968, four Colts had been assigned to bomb a remote mountainous U.S. radar facility in Laos, which was extracting weather data to time American bombings of North Vietnam. During that cool, dry afternoon, CIA flight engineer Glenn Woods and pilot Ted Moore coincidentally were flying back to the radar facility to supply ammunition. Woods fired at two of the Colts with his AK-47 from his unarmed helicopter, causing two biplanes to crash and the other biplanes to retreat. A few important items displayed at the museum are very much there for public relations purposes and for historical reasons. For instance, to mark the 2011 killing of the terrorist Osama bin Laden in northeast Pakistan by Navy SEALs, there's displayed what's believed to be his own personal rifle, a Russian AKMS assault rifle. Among other items on display at the museum are concealed bugs, ingenious gadgets, and many lethal weapons. These all give a valuable insight into the world of spying. As for the FBI, they run a restricted tour of their museum in Washington, D.C. People who wish to visit there must book at least four weeks in advance, be an American citizen or green card holder, and pass FBI security vetting prior to being issued with their tour tickets. The museum looks at the FBI's historical involvement in combating domestic terrorism, organized crime, and their involvement in high-profile criminal cases like bank robberies and missing persons. It also features an FBI historical 10 Most Wanted list, with such past wanted subjects as David Sylvan Fine, an 18-year-old peace activist who took part in the 1970 bombing of an army research center that killed a researcher there. He spent five years on the most wanted list before being captured in 1976. Another example of an intelligence-themed museum is the U.S. Army Military Intelligence Museum in Fort Huachuca, Arizona. They have on display there a genuine World War II-era Nazi Enigma code machine, at one time one of the most secretive devices in the world. The stories and artifacts from the CIA, FBI, and U.S. Army museums evidently act as effective promotional institutions. The CIA museum, for instance, despite requiring restricted access, still receives tens of thousands of annual visits from agents and invited guests. According to the CIA Museum's former curator, Tony Hiley, every new CIA officer is provided a tour on their first day, and possible recruits find themselves eager to join after being allowed a viewing. Nevertheless, for everyone else, it will remain a museum you will never visit.